This is going to be a fairly quick intro to Adobe After Effects, and I'm using Adobe CC 2014, but CC 2015 is also out now, so you can kind of pick whichever one you want to use. I just found CC 2015 still a bit buggy for me, so that's why I'm in the 2014 version. But when you open up your Adobe After Effects program, this is what you'll likely see. And the first thing you might want to do is go to Composition, and then New Composition. And from there, you can give your composition a composition name, so I'm just going to call this Tutorial. And up at the top here under basic, I'm not going to go into the advanced tab since we won't be dealing with anything like that, but you can set the width as well as the height of your particular video or animation that you're making. It's set to 1920 by 1080, which is 1080p, so I'll just leave that right now. And right now it's set to lock aspect ratio, but you can uncheck this if you want to make these two values something that's not a standard television aspect ratio. And you can also set a preset for different types of recording. So if you're importing a specific type of video, you might want to set your preset to match that. I'm going to leave it at HD TV 1080p at 29.97 frames. Under pixel aspect ratio, I'm going to leave that. Under frame rate, I'm also going to leave it at 29.97. The only main thing I'm really going to worry about right here is under duration. And the duration is just the amount of time that your animation or video is going to end up playing. So these first two digits right here are actually frames. So don't confuse those with seconds or parts of seconds. These right here are the actual frames. So there are 29.97 frames in a second. So each frame is approximate to about two seconds of time. These next two are the seconds of the video. These two are the minutes of the video. And then the final one right here is the hour. So I'm setting this to be a five second long video. And then under background color, this is the actual color that'll be in the background of your video. It's set to black, but you can just click on this and set it to be whatever color it is you want it to be, or enter in hex codes or RGB values, anything like that. So I'm going to hit OK so I can start my document right here. And as you can see right here, here is the black box that is the background of my video. And what I tend to personally like to do is go up to the top here and select the rectangle tool. Q is the shortcut for that. And I have my fill right now set to a white. And if you want to cycle through your fill and stroke options, here's stroke. So let's say you don't want a stroke. Right now this isn't set to a stroke. You can hold Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac and just click on the stroke, which will allow you to bring up different options. So here's a standard stroke. Right now is a gradated stroke. I'm just clicking while holding Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC. So you can go through all the different options very quickly by doing that. Once you have the red line through it, it means there won't be any. So we can kind of pick whatever you want to do if you want to have a stroke or just a solid fill. But I just want to put a solid white fill on the background here, which will end up being the background of the video as a whole. And you don't necessarily have to do this. I just found when you use just the actual composition setting for the color of the background color, things can get a little bit buggy sometimes. So I like to put a nice big white box or whatever color box behind everything before I start. And when I drew this white box, it created a shape layer right here on my little window. And if you click on this down arrow or up arrow, depending, it'll actually show you the different options for this shape. But I'm not going to worry about this background shape. I'm just going to show you the way that you can kind of customize and create custom animations very quickly inside After Effects. So right here, this window, the project window, is where all your different files will live that you want to actually import and use in your animation. So if you want to import stuff into here, it's really easy. You can just double click on it, which will bring up a finder window. You can just navigate to whatever image or video asset you want to import and then click that and hit import. You can also go to file and then import and you can do like Adobe Premiere or file or multiple files if you want to work that way as well. But I'm going to use this, which is just my logo, and it's an Illustrator file. So to use things that are inside your project window, you can just click on it, hold and drag, and you want to drag it right down here into the timeline window. And as you can see right here, this plopped my logo into this particular video screen. And one thing for Illustrator files, there's a little button. If you look at my actual Illustrator file here in my timeline window, so right now the background shape is selected, and right now the actual logo Illustrator file is selected. In the middle here, there's an option, which if I highlight over this, it says for comp layer, and it says for vector layer only continuously rasterize. For any Illustrator files, you want to make sure this is checked. It'll prevent your vector images from looking pixelated, which can be a little bit frustrating if you have to deal with that. But I'm going to click on this arrow to make it open up all my different options here, in which this case are just transform. So I want to click on this arrow as well. And right here is what I'm going to cover about how to actually produce animations inside After Effects. There's things like position, scale, rotation, and opacity, which are really the backbones or the basis of the different simple ways you can animate and create custom animations inside After Effects. And also this bar right here, you can highlight over the left or right side of this bar to shrink the length of your actual thing. And you can click and drag on this bar as well to move where this appears. So right here at the first frame of my video, it isn't in there at all, so I don't see it. But if I move this little timeline scrubber to the 20 frame mark, you can tell the logo now appears. And you can just click and hold in this little timeline scrubber or click on the actual number portion of this timeline to move this bar around. And if I, like, let's say, want to make sure that my 
particular element matches up right where I put my timeline scrubber, I can click and hold on the edge of my visual element right here and then hold shift and shift will just make it snap to this timeline once they get pretty close to it. So that's a very quick and easy way to make sure that things line up the way you want them to. But I actually want this logo to go through the entire intro here, all five seconds. So I'm just going to drag this all the way to the left and the right. And up at the very top here, there's two little blue bars. And think of this as kind of like a way to magnify. As you drag these bars in closer together, the time becomes smaller and smaller. So you can get a better idea of making fine tune adjustments if that's something you want to do. And then you can click on this little bar that's been created here to kind of sort through the entire length of your video. Since we're not dealing with too much time here, I'm just going to leave this at full scale. But do keep that in mind if you need to fine tune details a little bit better that you can shrink this bar from the left or the right to become much more specific to a particular timeline. So right here it's literally frame by frame as you can tell by this little checkerboard effect that appears here. But I'm going to zoom this all the way back out here and I'm going to start at one second. So it says 100 right here and that's also displayed on the left hand side of my timeline frame where it says 100. You can manually enter in a time there as well if you want the timeline scrubber to go right there. So I entered in two, hit enter, and it brought me to two seconds. I'm just going to make this one second again, though. So the way you can actually create animations or effects inside After Effects is through keyframing. And keyframing is just a position that After Effects will remember where you can set a particular value or effect to happen. And then you can create transitions through different keyframes to make custom effects happen. So I'm going to hit on, let's start with a position. I'm going to hit on position, and it looks like a little stopwatch almost to set a keyframe right here. And by clicking this, it'll set the position of this item right here at the one second mark right where it is currently. So I'm going to drag my timeline scrubber all the way back to the beginning of the video now. And this time with the position selected right here, you can kind of move through these different options right here like position, scale, rotation. I want to make sure that position is selected. And I'm just going to click, hold, and drag this off to the left side here. I was holding shift when I did that, so it did it on a perfect horizontal line. Now I'm just going to click on the bottom of my timeline here so nothing's selected and move my timeline scrubber up here to the one second mark. So as you can tell, that very quickly made a little animation right here that's quite simple but really easy to do and it's actually quite powerful when you think about it because you just have to think about where you're placing those keyframes and then the behavior will always affect between these two frames. And of course you can click on your actual keyframe elements and then drag them around and move them around your video if you want to reposition things afterwards. And if at any time you want to change the actual effect itself, you just have to make sure you click on that keyframe. And if you want to quickly navigate between keyframes too, there's a little left and right arrow right here that lets you sort through those quickly, or you can hold the shift button and that'll always lock you on the keyframe as you get a little bit closer to it. So now I'm going to quickly cover the other ones because this is really the basic idea of how to make custom animations inside After Effects. So I'm going to very quickly hit the opacity little stopwatch button here to set an opacity keyframe. So right here on the one second mark, we now have an opacity keyframe set at 100%. If I move all the way back to the beginning here, I can click on this 100% and type in zero. Or I could even just move this little bar. If you highlight kind of near the beginning of this, it sets a little bar for you to set the overall opacity level. And that applies to really any of these different effects here. So now as I move my timeline scrubber over here, you can tell it's slowly transitioning from the 0% opacity that we set all the way up to the 100% up here. And if you want to change the way that these opacity levels look as you move up, just click on that particular keyframe. And I've also found it's important that you make sure your timeline scrubber is exactly over that keyframe, so you're just affecting that one. And you could enter in something like 50% for opacity. So this way, whoops, I didn't apply for some reason, 50%. So now it's going to move all the way from 0% opacity and slowly go all the way up to 50 but I'm actually going to move this all the way back up to 100% here just so I can keep on going. There's an option for scale as well, so I'm going to click on this little stopwatch icon to apply the scale. Right now it's at 100%, but let's say I want to make this a lot bigger. So I can click on one of these two different things, and by default they're locked by this chain link icon right here. If you want to scale independently, just click on that lock icon and it will no longer constrain proportions. But I'm going to set this to like, let's say 150% by clicking on that typing and hitting enter. So now if I were to go back to the beginning right here by bringing my timeline scrubber all the way back to the beginning, I don't want this to be 150%, so I'm gonna make this 100 and hit enter, which will make the start smaller, and as I move up here, the logo will get bigger and bigger until it reaches the maximum set by my keyframe. And the last one right here is rotation. So this will just set a rotation of your item to kind of transition through the two different points. So I'm gonna hit on the little stopwatch icon for rotation. Once again, I'm gonna move all the way back to the beginning of my video right here, and I'm going to change these different elements. It starts out by 0x, and that's just like a number of rotations that it's going to try to go through. So I'm actually just going to make this 1. The bigger the number, the more times it'll run through that rotation pattern. 
and under degrees that's just the amount of degrees it's going to flip around so you can kind of enter in different numbers here and see how that affects things but i'm going to enter in 90 percent right here so now as i move my timeline scrubber through this video you can tell the logo is going to quickly go through while rotating until it reaches its final point right here and then from that point on in the video it'll just remain consistent so if i were to hit the space bar very quickly so you can kind of see how this animation looks that's what we've just created right here. As you can tell, it's pretty easy to go in here and make simple animations. And you can, of course, select multiple of these different timeline elements right here by holding Shift and clicking on them. And then you can Control C and then Control V or on a Mac, Command C and Command V to paste them, which will make that animation happen again. Just make sure that you're mindful of where you're placing these different keyframes on your overall timeline window. So if I hit the space bar right here, it's going to enter in through this. And then it's actually going to transition all the way back and forward. So it's always remembering where it left off and where it's going. So right here, because it starts in a rotation, and at right here, it ended in not a rotation, it's going to continue rotating all the way through these two different points. So if you don't want this rotation in between these two, or opacity, if you're using opacity or position, just make sure your end point and then your beginning point of your next animation are always the same. So that way, if I were to change this one to be zero and then once again zero so the beginning of the new animation and the end of the old animation are the same that way it won't make a new unintended animation in between these so then i could just hold shift and go over this keyframe click on that keyframe make sure just that keyframe is selected too by the way you can kind of click off and then click back on to make sure just that keyframe selected and at that point i could enter in let's say 2x by something small like 10 degrees right here so now as i go between these two points right here you can tell the new animation that i've just created but that's really the basics of creating animations inside After Effects. This is about as simple as you can kind of go about this, but you can really expand upon this by adding more and more layers and different animations on top of your video or whatever it is you're trying to create. Things can get very complex very quickly in here. So that's why I made this video with just one element to think of at the start. But by thinking about things in terms of keyframes, where the keyframes are and how they affect other things in your animation, you can really start to make some nice simple intros that can do a lot to add a more custom feel to whatever video or animation that you're trying to make. But I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please hit like and favorite, and if you want to see stuff like this every week, please subscribe. I do my best to keep new content just like this coming every week. Thanks so much for watching.